Can you uh, explain a little bit more that star over E? Are you given that or is that an emergent thing? So like at which stage, is that the result or the, the requirement? It's a great question. So it is a requirement of the system is that you must design it with this parameter in mind. The hard part is you have to design it with S star over E being satisfied the whole time. Right. And here's the extra trick here. S star over E is also a measure of temperature. Oh and, and, and and yep, we're, this, it all comes back to temperature. The hotter you make them is the same thing. Temperature is kinetic energy is the faster you're spinning. So if you take your, your top and you spin it faster, it's more stable, but you got to make it hot. And so here's the trick. How do you make something hot that's starting cold? And it has to be hot by definition. Mm -hmm. And so that's part of the, the challenge of what we do day to day is getting to these hot plasmas. And where people have, other people have tried to make FRCs and not been very successful, it's because they couldn't get it hot enough fast enough. Is it fell over, it tilted before it got hot. And so we spend a lot of our electrical engineering. In some ways, Helion is more of an electrical engineering company than a fusion company some days, um, focusing on how to make the electronics fast enough to be able to get it hot enough soon enough that you can keep it stable the whole time. So you're trying to reach 100 million degrees. How do you get to that temperature fast? And by the way, what can you say to help somebody like me understand what a hundred million degrees is like. It seems insane. What does that world look like? I guess just everything is moving really fast. Uh, like you said, you can't put anything mechanical in there. Yeah, so a couple of key things happen. So when gas is that hot, there's, uh, we talk about the states of matter. You have solids where ice, it's cold. The atoms are now bound in a lattice structure together they're held together. And then liquid, you've broken a lot of that lattice structure. They can move around. They have some kinetic energy, but they're still pretty contained. They stay in the bowl. Keep heating it. Now you're in gas. And now these particles are free to move around. They're moving around. They're bouncing off of each other all the time. And you can keep heating it from there. And that's where we talk about um, some more phases of matter. Um, we can add a little bit more physics here. Uh, we talk about rarefied gases. So when we think about most gases that, that humans interact with, they act like a fluid. And what I mean by that is that they're colliding with each other so often that the particles at any one place here, the air is roughly the same temperature as the air here. That these particles are bouncing off of each other. If, if you put a really hot one right here, it would then cool enough that all the air is roughly on the same temperature. Um, but you can be what's called rarefied. And this is like space. This is where now you have particles moving around, but they don't collide with each other very often. And so you can have one very, very high energy particle and very cold energy particle, and they may not even touch each other, but maybe occasionally they bang into each other, they collide, and then they transfer energy. And that's where we call rarefied. And then you can go even hotter than that. And that's where now the actual atomic states, which has uh, the nucleus, which has a proton and a neutron and an electron gets so hot that electron gets energized and then escapes leaves the system. Um, and now they're charged. You have a positive nucleus and a negative electron floating out. And that happens on the order of 10,000 degrees. So way hotter than what we're used to. But now we're going to go hotter. We're going to take this plasma and go even hotter. And what does that mean? At that point, a lot of the way we think about temperature doesn't really apply. The idea that you have these random motion of particles, because now they're all individual particles moving at very high velocity. So what it's really is a, is a, is a, a, a measurement of is velocity. It's really a measurement of how fast is that particle moving. Um, and... And that's how I really think about temperature when you get to that 100 million degrees. And so it does, it does some more complex things. If you have this high energy particle, that's why we like fusion, is moving at high velocity and there's another one moving at high velocity, they will come together, they will collide and they will fuse. Mm -hmm. But other things will happen. You don't want to touch that high velocity particle with any kind of material because it will collide with that material, damage that material, and usually like blow off some chunks of that material. Mm -hmm. So we don't do that. We keep those charged particles in a magnetic field. So they just bounce around and they don't ever touch anything. And that, that's, that's really important. Um, and so it's, it's less thinking about it from the way we normally think about hot and cold and more thinking about it from a velocity point of view. 
So what we should be imagining is uh, extremely fast moving, what is it, one million miles per hour, is that accurate? That's the right kind of order for these systems. Crazy. And so you're looking for them to collide. Well, first of all, to get back, is there some interesting insights, tricks, anything you could say to the complexity of the problem of getting it to that high temperature quickly? So if temperature is velocity, that means they're moving quickly over a given amount of space. Speed is distance divided by time. And so um, if you have a, a machine of a certain size and it's moving very fast, that tells you the time that that particle is moving from place to place in that machine. Um, and in fact, if it's a million miles per hour, these are on the order of 100 kilometers per second, which you can flip that around and you can say you're moving at meters per microsecond. Mm -hmm. So feet per millionth of a second. <laughs> and so that fundamentally tells you, and we've known this, as soon as you say, I want to do fusion, you know you need to react to the universe in microseconds and, and be able to understand the system in that speed. And if you get it hotter, it goes even faster and you have to go faster. And so we look at those and that's how we think about the systems. We measure everything in microseconds, not in seconds. And so when you do fusion, it's pretty wild. It's literally a flash. Psh, fusion happens. Mm -hmm. And it's over. You start it. You do a lot of fusion. You recover energy from it. And then you turn it off before the human eye can really respond even. 